Wake up, gamers, because you're listening to the Big Think Dimension with Dan and Bob Video Games. Bob, we don't have a job to do. Oh, thank God. KZ Excellent. Mwam, mwam, mwam. And Mr. Feel. I sure is sorry, y'all. Here on Gigaboots. <laughs> so Bob and I tragically have lost yet another giant hour-long video. <laughs> You did? Uh, yes, we recorded a giving games a chance for a thing and lost the video. I'm fine with it. I don't think it was the best video we've done. We recorded it at six in the morning. Oh, yeah. That sounds like you uh, binged something to watch and then went, I should make some content. We, Yeah, we need to stop doing any sort of video tests that are also... <laughs> uh, uh, that are also content. content. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, bad. So I got to the bottom of what caused the problem. Okay. Ugh. Uh, audience, I'm going to explain it technically, and then I'm going to break down how I'm the only human being who has probably ever had this problem for real. So there are these things in AVI files called indexes and super indexes. They help the video player figure out where to go in the data to scrub through a thing. Video editors need this shit to exist. Otherwise, they'll just go, you're trying to hand me mush of data. This isn't a video. Videos have indexes. Guys... We exceeded the amount of indexes an AVI file can have. As it turns out, you should not make an AVI recording that is 750 gigabytes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we're the only humans who have probably ever had this issue. Great. As it turns out, completely lossless 4K video for over an hour, a little complicated. It takes up a little bit of space. But uh, yeah, the problem solved now. I just had to change some uh, technical features in this thing that hit it in a menu I couldn't find. Uh, and it's all good now. So we should have video coming out again fairly soon, especially now that the long cut of the Xbox destruction video is up on the Gigaboost Prime Patreon, where you get to see like, I think it's about 18 minutes long of here's here's all the audio that was there originally and these normal speed shots and stuff there's tons of stuff i wish i could have included in the other cut but then it would have destroyed the pacing right because I, I i knew it would do that and then i still tried to experiment because there's some funny stuff right like fucking aggro chops open the fucking xbox and you can see between the two halves of it that are supposed to be one piece and he goes, now this is what I call inside Xbox. And I was like, God, I want this clip in the fucking video <laughs> so bad. <laughs> but it, it, it couldn't fit. But it is in the long cut. The long cut's really good. It has surprisingly good audio considering uh, it's just a shotgun mic sitting on top of the camera. It's a good shotgun mic, but still, I was like, hey, we should film everything outdoors. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway. So with all that done, we should be getting normal videos out again. Thank God. Uh, and that problem solved <laughs> so we don't lose an hour long video. Yeah. Uh, aside from that, uh, nothing else to catch up on except for uh, watched the... Because you guys gotta understand. <sighs> the lost cost fallacy is real. <laughs> I had seen the three other live action Rurouni Catching movies. <laughs> <laughs> They made two more this year, and I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations! They did the. Oh, they appeared on Netflix one day. Mm -hmm. <gasps> yeah. So, so we're sitting there, and we're looking at it. There are two films. Remember, these are the fourth and the fifth Rarone Catch the live action films. Now, Bob, what's the name of the fourth one? The final. What's <laughs> the name of the fifth one? The beginning. <laughs> <laughs> now. It's, I'm not one of these watch order types where I'm like, here's my custom way of watching any given co content. But I swear to you, if you, for whatever reason, decide to watch the live action Rurouni Kenshin movies, watch the final one first. Because the fourth movie has... No, yeah. not the, Watch the fifth movie called The Beginning yeah, first. Yeah, I was like, don't, don't say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Do not watch the one that is called the final. Watch the final one. <laughs> uh, the reason being, the fourth movie has something like 15 or 20 minutes of the fifth movie in it of every important scene. So it's just spoiling the ever-loving shit out of it. And it's like, well, now I don't even get to go in with the, I wonder how they're going to pull off this thing from Samurai X. Because that's actually what the fifth film's about. It's about Samurai X for anyone who yeah. hasn't. It's, it, it's, it's actually really cool. The acting's good. It looks really good. 
Um, highly recommend that fifth film. If you think you might be interested in Roroni Kenshin in the live action, watch the fifth film and then start again from the beginning and realize you were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it, that one's really weird because the rest of the movies kind of have their own like style and stuff. Yes. That movie is almost a shot for shot remake of the Samurai X films. Which is why it's so good. <laughs> yeah. No, it is. It's cheating because it already took something that took the original, completely reimagined it in a more serious tone, mm-hmm. and then just put that in live action. Like, that totally worked. Yes. The other ones have to take arcs of anime and condense them into movies and cut things out. What, what was it? There's one critical flaw throughout the four f- other films. Which you were talking about. They, they forgot to train a dude. <laughs> yes. So now everyone but Kenshin is powerless for yeah. the entire four movies. It's pretty rough. Sano never gets strong at all. <laughs> He's always just kind of a joke character. And it's I, kind of insane watching it even. Even not walking in with like knowledge mm-hmm. necessarily into the knowledge of Verona Kenshin. But just being like, man, literally no one can fucking solve anything without Kenshin. Yeah, they even like downplay Saito. And it's like, dude, come on. <laughs> he just kills dudes. You can let him have a win. No, I'm sorry. Not even one. But yeah, uh, I had to continue because for people who aren't paying attention, I've seen virtually every live action adaptation of an anime ever made. <laughs> At least one's brought to America. There's plenty that never made it here. That's true. There are plenty and, and plenty that aren't even uh, legit. Uh huh. Like the Dragon Ball shit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, and that, that's why when I say Bebop is frankly one of the worst, if not the absolute worst, that takes that that there's a lot of weight to that statement because it's competing against Netflix Death Note, Japanese Death Note. <laughs> How many aren't there like five Japanese Death Notes? If I recall, there were three or four. I did not watch any past the first two. Oh, uh, okay, because I know Carl's seen all of them. Yeah, I know they did the, the initial set, and then they came back like ten years later and right. did the weird one where it's like five notes. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that sounds wrong. That's five times as many notes. <laughs> yeah, it was like dude, okay, dude, that sounds cool as shit. Cinco Death Note. <laughs> Is it like Clue? Or are they all in like the same like building? I have no idea. I hope. <laughs> But yeah, someday I'm going to watch those. But <laughs> I knew this Kenshin shit was going to leave Netflix, which makes sense. The rest of it already did. I don't know if the rest of it even showed up there. No, where, where, what streaming platform did we watch that on? I bought those on Blu-rays. They came out. <laughs> those, those were Blu-rays? Pretty sure. <laughs> those movies look like shit. Oh, no, that's tragic. Now I I'm th- thinking I back think- on it, I was like, maybe not, because yeah. I, I don't know if... I don't think I actually own those. Yeah, I don't think you own those. I think we watched it on streaming, and the first two looked really, really bad, and then the third was fine-ish. And and then the fourth was fine, mostly. <laughs> and then the fifth one looked really good, and it was like, oh, I wish I was watching something on this par the whole fucking time. Yeah, I remember the first one's the one where they were like, we can color grade, and it was like, uh... No, you can. No. <laughs> you think you can, but you're wrong. Uh, but yeah, aside from that, that's, that's, that's all the live action fucking anime shit. That's all the tech shit. Let's talk about games. Fucking sure. Welcome to the ouch. Uh, fucking, I played a couple hours of Deathloop. Deathloop seems really nice. I kind of laughed when I realized. So you're really obsessed with an art style from older times. So like super obsessed, 60, 70 sort of specific art styles in this society that is trying to advance science and something has gone horribly wrong. <laughs> Yes. With this death loop. Uh, I, I laugh really hard. I am enjoying the game. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think it controls better than I was worried it would. Like, it's not the slickest feeling shooter, but it definitely feels very, very serviceable. The controls aren't getting in the way of me playing. Uh, That's good. Because yeah. they definitely that, did in previous titles from this company on console. Yes. And you know what really helps? Uh, uh, running at 60 frames per fucking <laughs> second and also having controllers with very little input latency. Yeah. Because I think the last time I played a game from... Actually, no. I did pick up Dishonored 2 for a moment on the PS4, right? Yeah. I remember that having massive input lag. Yeah. That still felt like shit. But this feels immensely better than that. Like immensely better than that. Uh, I'm enjoying it so far. Got through what three levels? Yeah, I got through three levels mm-hmm. where 
I didn't do a full wipe once, so things are going well. Hopefully, I can keep up this momentum. Yeah, it, it starts getting nervous when it's like, okay, I just need to get out. I need to go out. I'm, I'm running out of those, those extra chances. <laughs> I like, there was some text that was just like, hey, not this way. And I'm like, you're not my mom, text. <laughs> and yeah. I run past it and I fucking win. <laughs> that, you see, that's good. It, it's like the... Um, it's like the DMC, the DMC text, except I'm not upset looking at it. Yeah, no, it's funny and has a point. Well, well, that that's because it probably isn't an insane misogynist. Yeah, just that's screaming uh, at you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes, uh, sometimes you're talking to it and having a good time. It's not like you went into the Twitter space of all women are liars. Parentheses prizes PS5. In <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that one. <laughs> Jesus, they let anything in there. They don't give a shit. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. I, uh, it's amazing when a platform relies on machines to moderate and they add a feature where you can't use machines to moderate. Yep. That shit goes Ari. God. What? Awry. <laughs> I actually didn't know what that word was. <laughs> That's fine. Okay, whatever. Uh, so, so Deathloop's cool? Yeah, no, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying yeah. it a lot. I'm really glad. Uh, and I'm sorry, Bob. This is cruel to say. What's up? I'm really glad technical problems could provide me a two-hour window to play the fucker. Fair. Again, the video wasn't that great. No, it wasn't. <laughs> that was that was not a good video. Uh, but that's fine. We'll give it another chance live. You don't really get a chance to play things, so I'm happy that you were able to like dig into something. Yeah, I have the stack over here for game of the year. You like, know. like you had that window uh, for SMT five, like pre-launch. Yeah, and I feel like that's the last time you had a shot. Yeah, yeah. Basically, when SMT five came out, that's when I stopped having time to mm-hmm. play games because the technical problems going on over here as we're trying to solve problems. Because once again, SMT five was the event point at which we realized we really need to solve this video problem because yeah. we lost that too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, everything's actually good now. I'm mm-hmm. glad uh, I got this stack of games I need to go through for game of the year. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're definitely doing a best remaster slash port category, right? Because I have Sonic Colors on this stack for some reason. <laughs> uh, yeah, might as might, might as well. I, I got I got to pick out from all these Final Fantasy ones they put out this year. Probably, probably nominate <laughs> I'm, one I'm, of these things. I'm probably gonna think if it makes more sense to do that or do worst remaster. <laughs> I think you should do both. <laughs> I think worst is an easier category. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, go. what other? All oh, right. GTA. <laughs> yeah. Of yeah. Course, we get GTA, Sonic Colors. You have to celebrate people that can do it right. And people, what are they doing? What did they do? It would have to be worst remaster presented to you by the GTA Definitive Trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> that's the worst one of all time, not just this year. <laughs> Oh man! It's like, um, oh no, Arkham's lighting's bad. This game's broken. <laughs> Machine learning can't figure out the joke and ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> this nut is round. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, no, I'm excited to go through that stack. Uh, mm-hmm. Got all the stuff on sale from uh, GameStop over the holidays. Uh, yeah. But uh, aside from that, all I did was my my new phone that I bought uh to help with credit and shit showed up it's a iphone 13 pro max i uh played castlevania grimoire of souls and shockingly enough it did almost completely smooth out the frame rate i was like cool now all i have to do is submit to playing a game on a phone instead of my laptop (laughs) great they need to release that shit on steam already they do close pills uh aside from that (laughs) <laughs> the piece of shit crazy taxi gotcha game from three years ago still runs like shit even on the world's God most powerful it. phone the Incredible. fucking thing I booted up and it goes congratulations you haven't played this game in 535 days here's 17 quintillion dollars I'm like thank you I will now spend this on I don't know how to play this game and I'm pretty sure the end game's broken which is why they shut down the servers a long time ago oh yeah oh okay anyway hey Bob hey what you been playing we also played dead rising for the stream that was awesome. Yeah, that was neat. We got the mini chainsaws from the cloud. Yeah, that game is unhinged. I, I didn't realize that you just could break it immediately. That's that's honestly when it comes to a game of the style and appeal of that game. Uh huh. That's what I want. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get it. I want I want the entire game to have one giant soft spot if you know where to push. <laughs> uh huh. The the ever popular 
many chainsaws with all three books that make it invincible. We, if only you could use many chainsaws on helicopters. If only. <laughs> he spent like 45 minutes blindly shooting a helicopter. Yeah, if only you could just chuck it up. Yeah. So yeah, that that was neat. It was good to see that all almost all the way through. Because we got oh, yeah, everything that's... for the regular ending. Yeah, we got go ending continue. A, but we didn't do the post ending. That's still pretty bit. impressive on like a fresh file. Yeah, that was my yeah. first time playing through that game. Yeah, most, yeah. most people I know uh, screw up and end up being like, all right, my seventh run, I finally made it to this point because I ran out the clock on a main story event. I might as well just start over and get some get some experience off the early early game stuff again. Yeah, there were a couple areas uh, we ran it pretty close. I, I, I the only time I ever beat uh, Dead Rising, I cheesed it really hard in a really embarrassing, sad way. Uh, uh-huh. You just, you just go under, you just go to the 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 lanes under the mall, mm-hmm. and you get a car and you just drive through zombies. Just, just drive through them. Keep driving through the zombies. Just, just go. Just keep, go, keep going. Keep doing it until you kill. Uh, Fifty three thousand one hundred and seventy four, I think it is. Yeah, it's something like that. Uh, and then you get the achievement for killing the whole population, and then you start a new file and get the mega buster that kills anything in one shot. Yes. Yeah. That would. And been then you're like, oh, oh, hello, hello, convict. You're here to ruin my day. No, no, you're not. <laughs> Your <laughs> you're track not. is great, but no. Goodbye. You're dead now. It's bullshit that you respawn on day three if I killed you on day one. That that doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> yeah. That- Oh, that's, that's weird. Hilarious. That's hilarious. <laughs> Did uh, you guys get the disembowel move? Yeah, I think that's one of the last things we unlocked, and I don't think we even used it. Yeah, we didn't use it, but it's like, you just literally rip them open. Yeah, you like shove your yeah, hand you just in. literally. Uh, and it's also really funny because there's enemies that uh, maybe aren't zombies that you can use that on. Oh my god, <laughs> Frank, are you sure you covered wars? <laughs> I'm covered in them now. It's just like, it's like Baki, Frank covered Vietnam by just killing everyone on both sides. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Because that's, uh, that's Baki's dad's backstory. He just went to Vietnam and killed everyone he could find on both sides. Wow. My God. That's really good. Jesus. Holy shit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, but yeah, hopefully sometime we can find a, a day to stream through two or two off the record or something. Because I really did want to go through that, too. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be neat. At the, inserting Frank into two is funny as shit. It, it, is, it is so funny, the things they do uh, with him and trying to address the original as well. Like, there's some fun stuff in there. I feel, I, I feel like he's more quippy in that one, too, because they're like, fucking, fucking be funny, Frank. <laughs> Dance for us, you monkey. You're, you're the funny guy, Frank. That's what we know you for. I guess they're like, okay, we did fucking a serious one and nobody fucking liked it, really. So I guess with Frank as the main character of this one, just make him goofy. Just yeah. go. Yeah, I think people still liked it. Like, I enjoyed Dead Rising 2. I just kind of like the vibe and the setting of the first one a bit more when it's a bit more a bit more grounded than what happens at the start of 2, where they're like, all right, here's your, here's your Vegas games with zombies. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I could see Vegas doing that. It was yeah. the, it was the same sort of thing that they later John Romero movie started doing. I know. All they did was transition to doing a little bit later John Romero stuff, and everyone's like, "What's wrong with you?" And they're like, "I thought you guys loved all of his work." <laughs> Meanwhile, I, I mean, I, 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 I like them. It. I just saw, I watched The Walking Dead on AMC. That's close enough. No, it is. <laughs> it it has like a very like John Carpenter esque thing to it too, where it's like. Okay, everybody's kind of used to the zombies now. They're just kind of something we have to deal with. Here's a game. Here's a game show about them. <laughs> yes, that is pretty John Carpenter. At some point, you have to play basketball against the zombies, <laughs> or they shoot you to death with a sniper rifle. <laughs> I fe- it almost feels like you're activating a memory. It's like, did they do that? Do you do play a basketball game against the zombie psychopath? Because that feels like something they would do. Yeah, exactly. You need to do all of this so we can understand what's in four. Uh, I I'm really curious what's in three, and I'm, regrettably I need to know what's in four. But Jesus yeah, Christ, Dead Rising Four, uh, Frank's big package. I assume what's in four is actually not as bad as what's in three, but it's still a bad game. <laughs> That's my guess. E- every, I don't know. Everything, everything the- I've seen, 
everything I've seen about Dead Rising 4 is like, what if we, what if we, Dead Rising 3 seems like a bad Dead Rising game. Yeah. Dead Rising 4 seems like nobody involved with this knew what Dead Rising was supposed to be and they didn't care to learn. Which is insane because it's still Capcom Vancouver. Like yeah, the yeah. last three games are all Capcom mm-hmm. Vancouver. Right. Yeah, it, it feels like they kept going differently each time and everything I've heard about the development of 4 is just like, even we hate what's happening right now. <laughs> and then Where? Capcom shut them down and I'm like, well, I guess that's fair after you make Dead Rising 4. <laughs> uh, they should... They should do make another one internally and put it in the RE engine so Frank can look fucked up. <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly, I would even take a reboot. Like if you just did they another should, one. Okay. Yeah, probably. Yeah, you don't need that character necessarily. Yeah. You could just do that again in a mall. And just I'd be just, like, uh, just put Frank crazy. West in, his, in Mercenaries mode in RE4 remake. Just have him uh, be the last unlockable that, yeah. character. Yeah, you should also do that. Yeah, that makes sense. And he is <laughs> like... Shoot him in the knee move would be he has a shopping cart out of nowhere to hit them with. <laughs> <laughs> he just he reaches outside of what the camera can see and then whips in with the shopping cart. Yeah, he has just hits them across the head with it and it explodes. Um, <laughs> you know, it's really it's really stupid, but I would pop like if they do a if they do a Resident Evil 9 trailer <clears throat> and like out of the shadows walks Frank West with the original voice actor, I'd kind of pop off. Yeah, no, yeah. that'd be great. I like Frank. I also like Chuck, but nobody likes Chuck but me, apparently. <laughs> uh, so, I didn't put this in news, but we we mentioned Resident Evil, you know, yeah. for a remake. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see that DC Douglas fucked up, apparently? Yeah, he fucked up uh, majorly. And, and just shared confidential concept art of the RE4 remake. What? Uh, because he's like, yeah, I'm already working on separate ways or whatever. <laughs> and and you can like see concept art of Wesker RE4 remake. And that happened this week. Oh, my God. Yep. Okay. Hey, you, uh, what, 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 what are they going to do? What are they going to do? Get rid of him? No, they won't. Uh, yeah, also, yes, they, they've recast everyone in Resident Evil. So seeing DC Douglas as Wesker, I'm like, you're still smart. Oh, thank God. Like yeah, you know, you know, you're not like. First of all, you you make you make DMC. Like if you were gonna start firing people for doing this, we wouldn't have a Virgil four games ago. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> I was just relieved to see. It's like thank God they're not recasting uh, everyone. Did you play anything else, Bob? Yeah, yeah, I played some things on my own. Oh okay. We had those new fighting games, or those fighting games get new characters this week. So Street Fighter Five and uh, Guilty Gear Strive both got a new character. Uh huh. <laughs> What's up, Dan? I'm in such a sad state. <laughs> Where you're like, those fighting games got a new character. I'm like, oh, uh, Melty Blood, uh, Strive, probably something else. Bob says Street Fighter Five, and I'm like, why aren't you dead? <laughs> uh, now it is. Yeah, that was yeah, it. I know, now I it just, is. It, it feels like it's been dead for a very long time to me, so it completely caught me off guard when you said that. Yeah, I got to play as Luke. Oh, thank God. Hell yeah. Um, his story m- mode only has one battle in it. It's kind of funny. Come on! <laughs> hey, they're busy on six right now. <laughs> they don't have time. Um, sure. Yeah. Okay. He's in the U.S. military. He talks to Guile about getting out of the U.S. military. <laughs> oh, they they really had to give him, like, the worst <laughs> backstory yeah. they could, huh? Yeah. They really just had to have nothing. Yeah, the the most interesting thing I found about his character design is that he wears braces. It's like, oh, that's neat. <laughs> and we're done. That was it. Uh, yeah, he's got like, I know he's supposed to be the hero of the next game, but he does. They gave him like the most generic move set ever. Like, oh, you know, sure you can. I got that. You want a Hadouken? I got that, but it's a bullet. It's basically the same though. God, he really is gonna be the main character. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it's really really basic stuff. Uh, not that interesting. That's it. Oh. Uh, then Happy Chaos came to Guilty Gear. Good lord. Oh, yeah. This guy's really weird. Yeah. If you're going in expecting a gun character like they've done in the past, like Noel or, uh, Ram- or wait, Elfelt. Yeah, or Elfelt or anything like that. Don't, don't. Yeah. Nothing like that. God. <laughs> you have a, your heavy slash button is now your gun button. Oh, shit. <laughs> but uh-huh. you have like two meters to worry about. Oh, no. So you have your concentration meter. 
That's what determines if you can actually fire the gun. No, what? <laughs> it charges up it normally. Also, once you pull out the gun with the circle button, you hit the, you have to hit it again, and you have to give him enough time to aim. So if you hit too fast, he'll just miss. Um, <laughs> it's really interesting, but it seems a little overcomplicated. He has two different stances for the gun as well. Like he has one where he he stands still and aims like really hard, and then the bolts are harder, and the one where he can walk and shoot. And but not block. Um, and then his other moves are really like short range, kind of slow, not great. I assume that some pros can get get this going, but he's really strange. Yeah, I was watching Maximilian going insane trying to figure out how to do basic combos with this guy. Yeah, that makes sense. Because <laughs> even like even if you go into those aiming poses, you need to wait a second before he can shoot. Otherwise, he'll miss. So it's just really hard to figure out how you properly integrate that yeah he said he says something like it's gonna be three years and we still won't know whether or not this character is good <laughs> <laughs> yeah i believe it <laughs> yeah um i don't know if they're gonna rebalance him or anything or if he's just going to be here and be this really weird thing I I hope eventually we get DLC characters for this game that are fun instead of uh, some sort of nightmare. <laughs> Homework. Yeah. P people also didn't really like um, Coffin Guy. Like they were like, oh, he's this dude's really bad. A gold dick Lewinson. Yeah, like I I also tried to use him. I'm like this is interesting, but he doesn't seem like very versatile. And then um, what's her name? Uh, Jacko. It it's just another one where it's really weird of like i have to summon these things and then i have to pick them up to move them and it's a bunch of things that are slow and it's like uh this is the game where i can be may and just mash and murder yep <laughs> well that that was always her thing of i'm gonna summon minions and make uh fans want to un uninstall the game <laughs> yeah in this time I, they decided uh, to make nerf that because she used to be like uh yes. arcune yeah um, where it'd just be everywhere on the screen and be a nightmare. But now it's like incredibly just, no, summon them one at a time and kick them to move them <laughs> or pick them up slowly. That, that is really funny. Yes. Because, <laughs> yeah, Arakune is like, a, what's, what's, what's a good term? He's franchising. <sighs> <laughs> yes. He just he installs <laughs> a bunch of local managers. That's what she could do as well. So it is weird to see her in this, this form. I, I like the version of this we got in Killer Instinct with uh, 2013 with Gargos, where they're yes. like, he's going to summon World of Warcraft demons, and they're just going to run across the screen, ca screen causing problems. <laughs> <laughs> it, I, I, t it, he, Happy Chaos has just come out, and I've already seen, like, you guys ever seen that Smash Bros comic where, like, on the left is the person playing Marth, and there's, they're doing, like, calculus in their head? Yes. yes. On the per right is the person playing Captain Falcon and he's just doing Falcon Punch. Yes. I've already seen that with Happy Chaos on the left and all his bullshit on the right is just Ram Lethal slash and her attack reaching halfway across the screen. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I saw that immediately. I was like, yeah, yeah, you get it. And I saw a lot of people like, so wait, Soul gets free reign of 75% of your health bar with one, one connect. <laughs> and then this guy has this. <laughs> 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 That's this like, game's weird <laughs> this is like when i followed street fighter 5's like esports scene and people were like this dude's so good with fang but he's gonna lose every time <laughs> they're like this man has to work so hard for half a bar i i also noticed that they put happy chaos under this shooter style and the only other one with that is Ram with all, so I totally get why people are just thinking memes immediately about <laughs> oh, that. No. It's like, yeah, she could just throw a giant sword across the screen. No problem. What's the difficulty on this guy? Beginner? <laughs> I didn't even look. I don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, because I think about it compared to like Zato one's like the hardest difficulty one, I think, on there. At least at launch. Now, are those real or are they lies like the Dragon Ball Fighters one? Because remember when uh <coughs> We were getting movie. We were getting magazine profiles for all of them, and nobody had a stat lower than S. <laughs> yeah, this was it like would, a, it would just be like Gogeta would just have like 
four S's for power. It, yeah, yeah, that was like the bullshit Dragon Ball thing where this is like, this is the difficulty in learning the character. That's It's also the difficulty in learning the character from the devs, so they have no idea. So they have no clue. Yeah, I yeah. don't think the devs I, know what th they made. I think May is set on there as like, oh, difficult. And I'm like, oh, no. Oh, God, no fucking way. <laughs> no, just, just throw the dolphin and then do the Blanca ball. After playing sets with you... And yeah. just watching May work, I'm like, man, I fucking remember how this game fucking launched. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm instantly just like, we picked, we picked up uh, Strive, did some matches last week, and I'm just instantly like, man, May is absolutely absurd. <laughs> how did they end up here? I'm like, please, <laughs> please stop. Um, for as far as other things I've been playing, uh, I picked up Unsighted finally, which I've been looking at since it launched in September or October. Uh-huh. And just haven't had time for it. Uh, I played this demo of it back during one of my demo roundup. I was like, wow, this is the best one easily. Is th Was this the Mega Man X one that controlled somewhat weirdly? Or is no, that another one? No, this is, oh, okay. this is not that. Oh, thank God. Uh, this is clearly inspired by Zelda, like top-down mm. adventure game with some Dark Souls elements. Um, and it's all set in the sci-fi future where he plays the robot girl. Um... So it's really cool, like, Link to the Past era tiles, puzzles, and things. But for some reason, they've decided the whole thing should be on a timer. <laughs> okay. Uh, every single person in the world is a robot, and they all have so many hours left to live. Oh. You're picking up uh, this stuff called meteorite dust that can, like, expand their health bar or their lifespan by 24 hours. And the game is constantly ticking down. Okay. Uh, this becomes kind of infuriating because if you die, you also lose more time. You, like, you lose an hour, plus you have to run back to whatever killed you. So I don't know why the system is here, and they clearly have got a lot of feedback about it because they've already implemented a system to turn it off completely. Oh, okay. Well, that's good at least. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing it right now to, just to see developer intent, try and understand what they're trying to put out there because it is... Right. It clearly has some inspiration from Dark Souls. Sometimes you run into, like, two dudes in the field. They can just kill you. Just instantly. <laughs> it's an, it takes some beats from Dark Souls. Sometimes you just die for no fucking reason. Yes. <laughs> That's... Now, I'm just thinking of Xenoblade roaming dudes. Where it's like, here's a level 90 just right here. Oh, wrong his place, name wrong is, time, His dude. name is Ambiguous Gert. And he's level <laughs> yeah. 145. Oh, no. Territorial Rotbart's here. Yeah, at least in that you could, like, you get an icon or something to, to, to depict their power. Here it's like, I've locked you in this room. Fight these men. And it's like, wait, I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> Don't make me fight immovable Gonzalez. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, and also, it, it has a system where you lose half of your money when you die, and it sits in the place, in the place where you die. Oh, you have to go get it. It's my um, money. At least early on, they give you, like, an equipable thing where it's like, you don't do that anymore. So I just always have that on because that I don't need another level of being infuriated when I've died. Because <laughs> there's already the one of I'm losing time. These people are going to die. <laughs> you don't and crave the, that. And these people are shopkeeps and stuff in town. So you'll lose functions entirely if you don't save them. Yeah, that's real Dark Soulsy. Yeah. Um, other than that, the game is really neat. Like it has a, a whole thing is based on parrying. So all the enemies have, like, tells for that. You can do tons of damage really quickly. They also set you up to fight the hardest boss first. <laughs> like, the, it starts out being like, yeah, you can you can go with this in any order. Like, you should, it's totally approachable like that. But you should probably go to do this one first. It, it pops up very much like Link to the Past with the crystals. Each of them have a number on it. So you could do it in that order. But they tell you right away you don't have to. And the first one they send you to, the boss has two faces and constantly spawns ads. It's like, that's that's crazy. Every other boss I've fought has one face. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's neat. I, I, I like it a good bit. The story is probably not very good. It, it seems kind of bad, but you know, it's got a, it's about robot lesbians, so I guess that, you know, mm. maybe it's Maybe it's not bad. <laughs> maybe I should maybe I should buy it right now. <laughs> yes. Now, Bob, you say maybe it's not bad. How hot are these robot lesbians? <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny thing. The Pixar for this game is immaculate. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, but 
They also do pixel art portraits, which are bad. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, yeah. one of those things where it's like the, the, their actual sprites look good. Yes, the sprites look their profile good. images. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, they all look bad, which is weird. They, then when you go to like the title screen, they have just actual art like drawn and it looks great. But then when you see them in game, it's like, why do you look like this? <laughs> Yeah, that's weird. Okay. I, I I have to wonder if it's just like one pixel artist who's really good at, you know, doing the style that works in the game and then just completely out of their depth when it's like doing a more character detailed, art. Yeah. yeah. Could be. Um, I heard this game is on Game Pass, maybe. Yes, it's it's on Game Pass if you want to give it a shot and have that. Have that. Uh, otherwise, I think it's like 20 bucks on PlayStation and on, P- and on Steam. It might still be on sale. Possible. Okay. Uh, definitely just trying it out. I, the demo might still be up on Steam too. That's how I played it originally. I was like, "Whoa, this is this is really good." Just keep in mind, the timer will appear, <laughs> <laughs> and the game will even be like, "Hey, if timers upset you, you can turn this off." <laughs> We're sorry. We're sorry we upset you. <laughs> it also has that problem that Link to the Past and old other older Zelda games have, where there's a bunch of different equipable items that you need to use for traversal. <sighs> You need to keep going in the menu to re-equip, and it's like, you should have found some button on this controller so I could have two sets equipable, so I could switch between my traversal set and my I'm in combat set. I feel like that's a given at this point, and you shouldn't, I, I shouldn't need the bag for that. <laughs> yeah. Because you get, like, you get, I, these guys obviously love Link, Twilight Princess, too. You get the spinner. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really cool they use the spinner probably better than that the game even does they have like little tracks you can sp- spin her onto and uh you do almost donkey kong country-esque like minecart segments with okay and uh you also use it to break open rocks and just move around the environment more quickly and you have the you get the double hook shots as well <laughs> so you're hook shocking between multiple things like that and it's like yeah, you clearly love Twilight Princess. I yeah. get it. <laughs> yeah, no, that 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 checks out. Uh, but that's everything I played. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, yeah, I also got to play a little bit of Solar... Or, yeah, Solar Ash. Oh, that's right. That fucking came out this morning. Yes. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, because I saw reviews. I didn't know it was already out. Yeah, I got to play like 30 minutes of it before I came here. Oh, okay. Not enough to give any real impressions of it. Oh, man, this is pretty. Can I get a score? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Bob, you said you you didn't have enough to get any real impressions. So how would it rank against every Castlevania game? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it looks really nice. It, it seemed like it might be running bad in certain areas. I need to get, get more time with this. See if, see what's up with that. Um, but yeah, you can just roller skate around this big cloudy area. That's cool looking. <laughs> cool. I'm excited to tell. That's yeah, what, yeah, yeah. It's forty bucks. I didn't expect that. That's fair. That that's I was like a premium fucking indie game, basically. Yeah, I was expecting thirty at most, but uh, well, we'll see. Hopefully, it, it works with that. Yeah, lives up to that. Yeah, yeah, lives up to that. I'll uh, I'll play to play more of it for next week. Cool. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just, I just wish that all these games would stop. Would would no? Actually, I just wish they would run smooth on the PS5. That oh, thing's insanely oh. powerful. Oh, yeah, I was getting stressed out about it being out, so that, that's my mindset that I was in. Yeah, that's fair. I may change from Death Loop to it. Yeah, I also depending need to, on how that looks. I need to play Death Door, a game I haven't even bought yet. But I'm like, I did, I got to finish Unsighted first because it's the same genre. Even <laughs> cool. If if you're looking for a quick game, Twelve Minutes I think is coming out in a couple of weeks. So oh, cool. PS5. Okay, I, I hear that might be uh, relevant for Game of the Year. Don't do it for Game of the Year. <laughs> well, only if you only if you want to do a stream for it. Uh, man. So yeah, so yeah. Uh, I'm excited to check out Solar Ash. Maybe I just have you download it here and play it so I can watch you. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Uh, we now go to KZ. KZ, what you been playing? Uh, with Endwalker coming out really soon by the time it's out, uh, early access by the time this pops up, uh, I went through finally Final Fantasy V because the Pixel remaster has been out for about a month now. Wanted to finally get into that because I stopped streaming through all of these when they're like, we're, we're remastering it anyway. And I'm like, oh, I mean, I might as well wait. 
And uh, turns out that was a good call because these remasters have had so many good uh, quality of life things in them. Uh, I outlined them a bit uh, earlier when I went through like one again when they first started putting them out where it's like you can just press a button and see the map of an entire area the whole time. So yes. it's, a re it's a really good way to gauge, okay, here's the place that l you think leads to a chest and in fact leads to nothing. And you can just see that ahead of time and you can start planning your treasure route. Uh, I need. I go here first. This is how I'll funnel in. That stuff's real good. I'm surprised they tell you where the treasure chests are. That's still weird to me. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's in there. But you can also turn the map off. So you know, so if you don't want it, you can just not have it on. Um, I don't need it. I don't need it. <laughs> yep. It's it's also good when I'm like, where is the exit? And they have the little triangles like on the map that'll tell you, like, hey, this is this is where this is. Um. See, the, the soundtrack is still incredible. Some of the stuff they did in this is really good, where any anytime something bad is happening, uh, I can feel this phase of Uematsu's uh, just love of rock music kick in, where a bad thing's happening, the electric <laughs> electric guitars are coming out. That's how, that's how you know something evil's about to pop up. <laughs> uh, God, the remix they did for uh, Battle on the Big Bridge is really great. Um I'm glad I now have context for Gilgamesh. Um, the localization for this is based on the GBA. Uh, did not know they were going to go this wacky with it, where <laughs> Gilgamesh transforms by yelling, it's morphing time. Yeah, that's um, <laughs> that's probably something that shouldn't be available on a digital store in 2021, right? Uh, yeah, no, it's yeah. fine. Haim Saban's dead now. He can't get mad. <laughs> It's yeah. not like it's it's not gonna it's not gonna be like I better not see five colors next to each other. <laughs> God, <laughs> were they just afraid to have him yell Henshin? Yeah, I guess. Huh? Yeah, yeah, that's probably. almost certainly what he yelled in Japanese. <laughs> yeah, probably because the, the the tone of this one's so much more comedic, and I kept having moments of like, so did they model Mario RPG off of this one in spe in particular, just in vibe and in the way certain scenes are like presented and how they transition to certain fights. I'm like, this feels like this is the one that they really were close to in Did, terms of that. Does butts ever emote by jumping? Hey, I, feel, <laughs> I feel like you have at least some moment like that. And when I hit the credits and I'm like, here's a small version of them running across the field. I'm like, no way. Are we doing a parade? <laughs> there's, there's little stuff like that where I'm like, this is, this is getting alarmingly close in, in that vibe. So that, that was making my brain feel really good. Um, but the localization is so funny because it just in general, the tone's a lot more lighthearted and comedic at times. Like you've got your, your main villain X death. Who's like fighting against a wise turtle in the turtle set. I haven't just been hanging around eating pizzas. And I'm like, that you just made a T a TMNT joke. That's good. And then X death goes, well, you, you should have had it while you had the chance. I'm going to kill you now. <laughs> and there's a, there's a bunch of fucking comedy comedy bits like going going out throughout the game i'm sure there are tons of references that just wouldn't translate <laughs> and that's why they stuck this in or maybe they're referencing ninja turtles we possible, don't know possible incredibly unlikely but yes. yeah i just wasn't ready for characters like uh butts or barts fucking going uh, jumping crawdads <laughs> when a bad thing's about to happen you're about to fight a boss and i'm like did they make this shit for kids wb <laughs> Okay, I hate to interject like this. This is sure. totally off course. Uh -huh. Uh huh. I remember something else to say about Happy Chaos. <laughs> okay. I don't know how we got here, but go ahead. He's got to move. Uh -huh. Where he takes his own health and makes the duplicate of himself that just stands there. I don't think there's any use. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, is that going to fool anyone? You hurt yourself to do it. It's very cool. Sorry, go on. Uh <laughs> That that's stupid and insane, like many aspects of this game are. <laughs> where, where I got into it, and I'm like, oh, okay, it's kind of doing the same thing the last three of these games did, where it's like there's there's four crystals, they're important. This is just like three where you go up to a crystal and it gives you a bunch of jobs. Uh, but the, but I would I was shocked given how comedic it was trying to be at times that uh, uh its story is so much better written than Force, uh, given the fact that it did not um. 
it did not turn into an assembly line of characters sacrificing themselves because they want to have another party member come in every hour. God, why is 4-2? I, I don't know what you're talking about. 4 is very organic in the way characters <laughs> enter. No, no, it's, it's, no, it's okay scary. because un <laughs> Final Fantasy 2 doesn't do a thing where here's an assembly line of all of them dying. By the way, none of them died. It, it, it's this, fine. This, it, 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 it's fine. It's very. It, it. They just read all those popular manga around the time where that exact thing happened. Yeah, when, when it happened like the fifth time, I was like, "This is this went from being funny to being kind of farcical." Where I feel like it kind of makes the story worse. Uh, Final Fantasy IV was actually one of the first video games to have a double Q line. For people who don't understand, the double Q line is so that way two members of a party can enter and leave at the same time at all times. <laughs> uh, enter the virtual Q on self-sacrificing yourself. You have to get the fast pass <laughs> yeah. for self-sacrificing. What are they freaking you have chain to, characters? <laughs> you have to you you have to get onto the app sick two months early to get the best opportunity to self-sacrifice yourself. Otherwise, it'll be really lame when you do it. <laughs> dip, dip and shit waited till day of. That was a bad move. They had to save everybody from some walls. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Fucking love dip and shit. You, you, you didn't even know, but they were in line during that scene. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this game actually handles uh, like stakes and death uh, a lot better and like presents it in a lot just just in a better way. I feel like uh, the writing was pretty, pretty solid. Gameplay wise, this is probably the best one. This does the job system, but fleshes it out in Final Fantasy three. You had this thing of you change jobs. Uh, your character is going to be like bad for like five battles because they got like job change sickness. They're all debuffed. You need to get past that. Here they're like, whatever, you just changed a job, man. Don't worry about it. <laughs> also, when you level up the job, you get you get passive abilities that you can slot in. So you can you can get toward endgame and go, I have a white mage that was a time mage before, so I'm just gonna put all the time mage stuff like on them. So they can just have access to that. Or you when you're red mage, the best thing you learn in this game is dual cast. So you can just cast what whatever you want twice. And you can just uh, attach that to any other character. So uh, end, <coughs> end game for me was having a character that could just dual cast holy or maybe dual cast Kuraga on everybody and then and then holy on the enemy. So there's a lot of wacky stuff there. And once you master a job, uh, your starting class freelancer just gets every single passive. So if you master a bunch, that's the strongest class in the game and it has all the important stuff attached to it. And you also propaganda for Uber. Yeah. So I, I didn't know that till the very end. People were like, you can just switch to that and then you'll get two slots to apply. Say one slot will be every black magic, you know, and the other one could be um, like HP plus 30% because monk gives a bunch of HP percentage bonuses as one of their abilities. Uh, but overall, I really, I really enjoyed it. Um, the combat felt really, really solid. Um, some bosses were a little, uh, a little wacky. Uh, some, some of them uh, go for some obtuse gimmicks that I didn't really understand at first. Uh, the funniest thing happened uh, toward the end. There is an optional boss against uh, Gogo, the the ultimate mimic, where he's like, I "I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you, I'm gonna copy all of your abilities and your moves." And I and I, I I would use like a move like holy or something on him, and he would cast meteor on the party or flare. And I'm like, this is tough because he's he hits fairly fairly hard, and some stuff is going directly through uh, reflex and stuff. And, and and the chat because they they were excited that they they knew how to beat this boss, just kept sending smiley emotes and uh, b being being very uh, being very mean about it. <laughs> and like, I know this thing and you don't. So I, so I took a second. I went, I can't figure this out after 10 seconds. And after the 40th smiley face I got, I went over to chat and timed one of them out as a bit so I could laugh at them. And that was long enough for uh, the boss to go, oh, so you realize I can mimic things and you're not actually attacking me, which means I have to copy you doing nothing. You passed. And then the boss ended. And I went, did I just fucking ban someone in my chat and it gave me enough time to win? This is the best it's ever been. <laughs> and the entire chat's like how the fuck did this happen how did we how did we achieve this moment 
It felt pretty good, and they're like, this is the best class in the game. The Mimic, in which um, if it, that character if that character goes second, it'll do whatever the previous party member did. Which, they, they added the ability to hit triangle to uh, jump to another person's turn if you... To, basically to pass. So that effectively makes that so much easier. I was having a stroke because I was like, what, what does he mean he fought Gogo in five? Gogo's in six. Yeah, I know. I that, so. that, also, that also confused me when I was like, yo, he's... Yeah, I'm looking at this shit now and it's like, oh, yeah, no, look at this dude. Yeah, they make you like go back to a very early area that had a job crystal you couldn't collect because it was like off screen. And his is the most fucked up where it's like, this place is underwater. You have to get to him, fight him and get out in seven minutes or you drown. Apparently, uh, butts can uh, hold his breath for that long. That checks out. He's a, I played him in Dissidia. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know what to expect from Gilgamesh. I don't really know him that well. I just know that he's cool and his song's great. So, so, so knowing that he has multiple fights where he's like, oh, this is getting rough. Right, I'm going to leave now. <laughs> or there's, there's a chest in the middle of the room. And if you open it, it'll be empty. But you opened it, so then it's going to cause Gilgamesh to spawn and say, I already took the shit in that, now you have to fight me. He's like, fucking the best weapon was in there, Excalibur was in there. Uh, and then he transforms and uses it, uh, and it does no damage because it was not Excalibur, it was Excalibur. Ah, yes, classic. <laughs> uh, and I think, like, X-Death, like, owns him immediately after that happens, uh, implying, I guess, that he meant to leave that sword for us so we would get owned. And Gilgamesh is an idiot and just and just took it. <laughs> There's a lot, a lot of really, really good fun, fun stuff in that. So overall, I was really happy. The re- remaster was um, was was really solid. Uh, you can really see them up their game in terms of like visuals, like scenes and just the detail of everything. So I'm really excited to see how they do six. Because that's going to be the the most complicated and the most like bombastic of these. So I'm really looking forward to how they, uh, how they're able to handle all of that. Yeah. The pixel art on six was already several notches above the previous <laughs> yeah. final fantasy games. Yeah. yeah and, it's not even close. And, and no. just, just how everything's like animated and stuff. I'm looking forward to seeing, to seeing that, that version. Cause they've taken a little longer each time to put these out. Cause the first three, very easy to, to, to get most of that done. They're just translating stuff that was nes um but yeah yeah this is probably my favorite of the ones that i've played so far really really solid in and pretty much all areas like the aside from like the last party member you get not being a character i was pretty 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 happy with it um cool yeah yeah there's not too much not too much else about it. and that's the only thing i ended up playing this week uh, okay uh feel did you play video games uh yeah i Played a bunch more Lost Judgment. Um, I'm consistently really impressed with it. Cool. I know there was some kind of shakeup with who was managing this franchise after Negoshi got kicked upstairs and then went to work for China. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I like them a lot because 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 it feels like they went. Why don't we let all the goofy shit everybody likes just bleed over into the main story now? What <laughs> <laughs> while also having like. Look, I love the Yakuza games, but they would, they, they, I wouldn't say any of them before Yakuza 7 had, like, a point. I think you could maybe argue there, there's some kind of thing about family in some of them. Yo, it's Fast and the <laughs> it Furious. Might be about family, who knows? <laughs> but, but then you have Yakuza 7 that's like, we're about this very specific societal ill of Japan. Yes. And then Lost Judgment is also like, we're about this very specific societal ill of Japan. Um... I like that. I like it. I like having a story that isn't where, where I can say something about the story other than, yeah, that guy pulled a lever and a castle made of gold came out of the ground. I don't know what the fuck was up with that. <laughs> uh, and that, yes. and that I sent a bunch of lobsters after a dude and it was funny. Uh, I really like Yagami, the new main, the main character of Judgment. Um, he has like, he doesn't so much in the first one. But in this one, they're like, what if we just made him into Jackie Chan? <laughs> yes. Oh, that's good. That's a good base. Because there, cause there's like a scene where he where he's like hanging out outside like a fancy restaurant that has like a patio with umbrellas and chairs and stuff. And a bunch of guys show up with batons. 
<laughs> to beat his ass. So he's doing the Jackie Chan thing of like dodging back and forth on a parasol and a table that they're hitting. Look, if if you grab a chair and are like spinning it on the ground so a guy can't get close to you, and then like at any point you knock someone into the chair, you're Jackie Chan. Dude. <laughs> So many judgment fight choreography scenes that happen like mid boss fight and stuff just feel like that Jackie Chan style of how are you doing this? Like I think of some of the fights even toward the end of the first judgment where it's like you're finding some inventive ways to avoid getting stabbed in the eye. <laughs> I, I'm excited I, I, to jump straight to this one, honestly. Honestly, you should. You yeah. should. I, don't, I really don't think the last one matters very much. Yeah, aside from um, it just being an origin story for that character, I feel like overall it's just like this is the leaner, better version. I, I much been, better. I yeah. have not felt a sequel jump in quality this much uh, in years. Honestly, it's hard to think of ones where it's like, "What's up?" An amazing sequel that like jumps in and kind of gets everything right. Yeah, this is like a this is like a DMC one to DMC three tier like jump. Yeah, like a Kingdom Hearts huge. one to Kingdom Hearts two, <laughs> where it's just like, "Wow, you got better in every single way." I, I could feel it in the fact that in Judgment 1, I played a third of it, unlocked one move, and that move became the best thing in the entire game, and I sweeped the entire game. Here, I didn't really have that. Also, they nerfed the hell out of that move. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also hit it away in a QR code thing in a convenience store across town. <laughs> but but I feel like they did a lot better there. Like, like it's even hard to, like, max out your health in this game because they, like, siphoned it on off into... You gotta buy a lot of skills in each style to get a health extension that's tied to this one. Like, there seems to be a lot of uh, attention being put into, like, really leveling up and lost judgment and that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah, they finally made the positive change of maybe random battles should give you things. <laughs> yeah all of those like challenges you do like mid mid combat to maximize yeah, cause I, experience I, cause you, and you yeah and you can buy upgrades that make them give more so I'm getting like a thousand per fight and it's like yeah that this was is so me. much more than you got from any other game in the Yakuza franchise yeah I do cool. yeah I get I get into that mode where I'm like okay I gotta I gotta launch this enemy in this style then switch to this other one. like get a kill in every style and then finish with like the special and it just feels so satisfying and also as soon as you beat an enemy, another enemy spawns like from a small distance you can see. So it becomes this thing of if you want to grind, it, you don't have to wait around for thugs to materialize. You can also get drunk and that makes more spawn. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the, okay. the, that, that would be how that's that been, works. That's, that's, been a, that's been a thing since Yakuza 1 where if you, get, if you wander around shit face, you just get in more fights. Huh. Yeah. It can't be overstated how much better this game is than the original uh, when you can just feel how pressing something on the D-pad to switch your combat style before had what felt like a full second of delay. Here it just feels instant. Like it feels like they've eliminated a lot of the input delay on like everything with the game. Also, there's a skateboard. Boy, am I glad that I've, I haven't been doing any. I haven't, I've done a bunch of side content, haven't run into a single trailing mission. I'm convinced that one at the start might be the only one there is, <laughs> except for maybe like one other one buried somewhere in the side quest. Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I mainlined. So I, so at most, I, I did one really dumb chase in the school. Uh, and I think that might be, might have been one of the only like big side things I did. But yeah, the tailing is supposed to be hard now based on that tutorial. So I'm, I, I'm glad there's none of it. <laughs> an, another reason that I'm really happy about this new like series over series, because they seem to have just decided that the protagonists of every game should be these fucking moronic boomers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like I, I wrote this on Twitter, but lost judgment is really a game for when you're like 35 and at work and imagining yourself doing karate because you have an hour left before you get to go home. <laughs> been me for 10 years <laughs> <laughs> because because you have you because you have like the squad now you have yagami you have uh crispin freeman's character who's like the big guy yeah you have the character who wore the anonymous mask in the last game and, fr and framed it and all and all these guys are like 30 and then you have there's this fucking scene where you're fighting these they're fighting the aforementioned guys outside the fancy restaurant and this guy comes out and starts shit talking them and talking about how he's a, a super badass fighter, even better than this, than Yagami, who's beating their ass. He doesn't look cool. He's like, 
he he like he he doesn't have a cool voice. He's just like this dude with shitty stubble who looks like a janitor, and then you find out he's a repairman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's he's the, just, he's the handyman. He just, he looks really uh, schlubby. <laughs> And then he starts beating their ass with kung fu. <laughs> um, I'm going to throw this out there. I want to see what people think. Mm. Uh, whenever we get a new Sonic game, humans should look like their Yakuza characters. I agree. Yeah. Dude, I 100%. Want... Okay. That's basically yeah. how they looked in 06. Right. So... We just need humans. <laughs> yes. Nothing would, nothing would complete me more than it's like, Sonic looks like kind of how he did in like Unleashed, that that more super cartoony but modern vibe, and then you just have the most beautiful looking, photorealistic, real actors, humans. <laughs> Fucking Yagami over here is like, hey, <laughs> I need Sonic. I need I need Sonic to talk to somebody, and then they do like the raising their fist pose that has existed in that franchise since the PS2. Yes, <laughs> where they just like they just like pump their fist up and shake it a little bit because yes. they're hyped up. I, I fucking love Yakuza for being like, here's Lost Judgment. Here's an animation from 2004. Hey, whole animal. <laughs> yeah, they, they they use the whole animal. I'm like, this game looks this good and has some some of the oldest bones I've ever seen. Waste not, yeah, what like, not. There's yeah. like not really anything I can point at and be like, that's not good. Because like everything's good, especially the music. The music is oh. a huge fucking step up. Mm-hmm. Even in a franchise that normally has pretty good music, it's like, it's like, guys, did you just, are you just like, we're going to break the Persona franchise's balls? <laughs> <laughs> like, like a little bit. The, la the last chunk of that game uh, just decides to fucking go insane. Like even the music's Cause, just incredible. Because you hang out in a school sometimes and there is like a song that just sounds like a Persona song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're That's pretty good. Yeah, they're clearly angling for that. Don't you have like school stats or there's something in that? That I feel yeah, there's like. school stories because at the start of the because near the start of the game, Yagami becomes the uh, the school because he has to do he has to do an investigation on school grounds and one of the teacher fu teachers fucking hate him and keeps trying to get him thrown out. So he's like, I'm gonna become the club counselor for the mysteries club. Because that because then so he's on now staff. she can't throw me out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you can't be thrown so, out by security because you're technically on staff now. So uh, and, and then the club will will give you like the, I think uh, this person's like getting into compensated dating and might be in trouble. So you have to go research that and help them out. Wow. I was also, expecting like mysteries, instead of mysteries of the school, not yeah, this, this person is in, in real trouble. <laughs> there's yeah. Like the, yeah. there's so much that like that. The, the school is a big focus of like the societal ill stuff where it's like, yeah, this person killed themselves because of bullying. And that's like a huge focus of the story. Huh? Yeah. There's, um, it, there, there's a scene without getting into it that like shows off some of that that uh, it's I haven't felt uncomfortable watching something in a game in a long time uh, that didn't just feel like bad where it's like, oh, you didn't need to do this. It was more like, wow, you're really handling tough subjects where I'm like, I, f I feel this. I've seen this. You, you clearly came also at this in a way where it's like, yeah, you, you people on staff have experienced things that have happened in this game and have yeah, translated it really well. That's how Yakuza 7 is, too. So it's like, yeah, I'm really down with these new, like, you going in like this on on uh, on your stories. Uh, also, Yagami feels like way, like, he's he's become, like, almost a cartoon character between 1 and 2. <laughs> <laughs> like, he wasn't so much of a smarmy fuck in the first one. And in this one, he loves flashing his attorney's badge. <laughs> of course. <clears throat> like I feel like most of the side stories and going involve him going I'm a lawyer by the way so don't try to bullshit me <laughs> uh, the only thing that even pops up into my view is like that's funny and it's not even like a problem it's just like an unforeseen circumstance of the PS5's power uh oh is sometimes the music will hard cut because it was like there should have been any loading here <laughs> for, for it to fade out naturally mm -hmm. <clears throat> instead the music just dies uh, I also have been doing the Genshin Impact event because there's an event going on right now it's it's the normal stuff you know there, navigate fight some things I didn't expect it to have like a really high budget anime fight scene cutscene in it oh I haven't got to that yet that's exciting 
<laughs> those are always good. Uh, so that that's exciting to work for too. Also, it's really funny because in the navigation ones, they'll give you a power up that lets lets you jump like four times as high to jump over things. But it didn't. It doesn't make your jump floatier at all. And Genshin Impact's jump is very fast. Oh no! So it so it just looks wrong. Oh like no! Like you go up like ten feet and then fall back down at super speed. Huh. That's weird because they have characters that have super jumps that, that do feel more natural. So I guess they're like, no, not that. It, the, the way you describe it makes it sound like it's a flea just jumping. <laughs> it, it does kind of have that energy to it. Yeah, a little bit. Did I play anything else? I've been playing Bejeweled 3. Ooh, because I bought that on sale because it's 99 cents on Steam. Uh, Bejeweled 3 has a really great soundtrack and it is like the last time anybody made a puzzle game that didn't have to be filled with microtransactions. Yep. Yeah. Those were those were the days. I, I'm I'm still really mad that Puzzle Quest is dead. Somebody needs somebody just make a rip off of Puzzle Quest. <sighs> yeah, that would be nice. Puzzles and Dragons doesn't count. That's like a fucking mobile game that wa- keeps wanting money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even the DS one just didn't feel right. I don't think. Sorry, 3DS. Yeah. And. Uh, that's all I've played. Podlords. <laughs> yeah! Oh, fuck. Yes. <laughs> Bob, I'm gonna need your stance. Podlords, yes or no? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, then we're talking about the Podlords. Uh, Podlords such as E. Lee Broyles, Corey Brown, the Podderu Lords Rise. Oh, boy. Red Blaze 27. Juice of Frost Resurrection. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Thumbs up. Suzu Wrong. Shiro. Emperor Zero. Shibuya Gato. Adranko is voting for Ravenbeak as the hottest video game man of 2021. Uh, I, that's a bird. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a male bird. Let's ask Sean Shiplock. <laughs> Let's not. Let me go to a yes man. Man, I forgot how bad the second half of Death Note gets. Gonna jump over to JoJo Part 4 again. <laughs> it's that so bad. bad. It's so bad. I, I'm gonna be honest. Having to listen to people tell me the second part was unbelievably bad for 15 years has me going, fine, I'll fucking reread it. God damn it. If you assholes are all just talking about the anime, I'm gonna flip. Oh yeah, there probably are. Yeah, they, they're, yeah, they're just talking about the last nine episodes of the anime. Yeah, the where fucking they run anime through the- is trash from day one. Uh, no, the anime is great. It is funny and it has a cool song. <laughs> I haven't watched the anime, but I, I quite enjoyed the manga up until the point where that happened. <laughs> <laughs> I see. It, it I, could- Maybe this is just a me problem, but I really enjoy just removing the cables and letting everything fall down and see where it rolls to. You know, I, I like that. I feel like Breaking Bad eventually has that kind of vibe. <laughs> oh, wait, we're in the Podlords. What are one shades of wonderful remastered? Gary of Light. Oh, oh yeah, he's ready to go. Too ready. <laughs> WTF Spider-Man, Mr. I Like Spam, my fellow warriors of light, reminder to get up and stretch and drink plenty of water when no lifing, Endwalker, DFW3K, the Nomad Soul variant, <laughs> a wild Pada Mew Pada Mew has appeared. <laughs> okay, is- sure. <laughs> Kristen, Jeff Keeley, and his co-host Tonberry. Oh, please! That's what a guess! A, that's such a good suit. God. <laughs> Gotta get that suit. The <laughs> drip on Miss Barry. <laughs> God hand Steam Deck Edition. <laughs> Santi Kunai. Adam got this one in too late, so I'm reading Holly Jolly Admar. <laughs> She's keeping the same next week. <laughs> Kyle Bjork. Zilter. Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Oh, God, shut the fuck up challenge. Iron Aggro. Blig the Blue. She's like this, boo. 
uncle. Tito Del Tutter. Yo! <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. That's Tutter's uncle, Tito. Monster Hunter, rising and riding. I thought it was going to be a silly visual novel. Why am I tearing up? It'd be like that sometimes. <laughs> Nothing to see here, Game Freak. Move along. <sighs> Come on. They're, they're like, hey, don't, Game Freak, don't patch out the stuff that makes us beat your game by getting half the badges. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Cooper Tank. Who's got a great profile image? <laughs> <laughs> Cooper Tank always had a good great picture. This this one has a nice vibe. Yeah, it does. Stranger of Paradise secret final cutscene will be Mobius Garland inviting Jack to join his men's rights podcast. <sighs> oh no. And then Jack will say no, because he respects women. You just messed up big time, Catman. We 13 Sentinel stands just keep on winning. Is that, yo, is that a cheer wine? Nice. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> of course he would own a cheer wine. He owns all the best things in life. Yeah, Can't he does. see what the other thing even is, but okay. Oh, oh okay. Now I get it. <laughs> <laughs> BN12. Does liking Phantom Blood best make me a hipster? No. 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 I'm going to say no. No, you just like, you really like <laughs> Castlevania. <laughs> hey, Jonathan's great. He tells that zombie that he doesn't deserve to know his prideful name. I, I, yes, I also really do like part one. Yeah, it's really good. I don't know how anyone can dislike part one. Yeah, also, yeah, it's, it's, it's like seven episodes. Get over it, guys. Come on. Yeah, it's fucking the, unhinged the, top the, two. I, it's, I don't get it. Yeah, I know. Fucking, I fucking, fucking, <laughs> all these fucking people are like, I, I can I can watch the 39, 39, and 39 of, of, of three, four, and five, but I can't watch the 26 of one and two. That, that's fucking impossible. I mean, it's like, how, how do we get to this point? All right. They rushed through all of this, too. I know. I, I, you know, honestly, I, I kind of wish they didn't, but I love what they did do, so it's fine. Yeah. Fluffy around and find out. <laughs> Indigo Sykes. Ashire sorry yo, cause no yo ni sikimihara wo padara padara. You know it's December, cause we're playing the the, the Pod Lord <laughs> Christmas music and the, the Potteroo. Did, did, did you see the one where they replaced the the DMC van with the Potteroo? Oh, no, I did not good. see that. <laughs> that's really good. Is it like a mod? Does it break through the wall? Yes. Yo! Oh my god! <laughs> I will buy this on the computer. Evil Lucario. Wait, Bob, we own that on PC. Yeah, because we did the input lag testing and then did no videos with that info. <laughs> Yes, that <laughs> happened. <laughs> you testing, live in hell. testing PC shit's really, really complicated. And at the end of the day, <laughs> uh, they would just ask us to buy another PC, knowing how button to pixel comments go. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Did you test this? Works on, a on Dell? my machine. <laughs> <laughs> Please test it on a wired Dell. <laughs> Clutchins. A raccoon that is already tired of these potteroos. <laughs> There is no hope. My grandmother once said, once you know the real thing, you won't be fooled by an imitation. Lamu. Aspiring Bamani ambassador Shinji16 wants to remind you that you matter. You are valid and you deserve to be happy. Hmm. Hmm. That's it. That's the pot lord's name. It's just hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. Thanks for the 50. It's, it's, it's got, it's got the, the luck of the Irish fucking main <laughs> character image just oh. doing a bit of an a pog. Oh, that's it. Just hmm. My dad has no culture. He's from Pennsylvania or whatever. <laughs> Wisconsin, Cleveland, Cleveland. Oh, it's Cleveland is from <laughs> Ohio because the villain yells Ohio as he gets yes. shot into space God. and lands in Lake Erie. <laughs> oh man! You see, Phil yelled Ohio, and I'm like, yeah, Yata's a very good yeah, I song. I was also <laughs> thinking Yata, and then Phil bumps out with the leaf. <laughs> <laughs> Maria Condenzamna Eve and Virvarb. Thank you very much to our Podlords! Thank you! Yes, Podlords. <laughs> Thank you, Podlords. I'm glad we got your stance, Bob. Thank you. <laughs> and if you'd like to become a Podlord, you can go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash gbpodcast. For as little as $5 a month, you get access to many benefits, such as early access to Chugging Bleach and Mondo Cool, our two anime review podcasts, 
extended armchair dev pitches and gamer premonition premonitions when the format of those shows make us leave ideas on the cutting room floor and a patron exclusive show one per month where you get to vote on what good or bad thing we have to watch and talk about that's patreon.com slash gb podcast and if you don't have any money you can help us by telling your friends and if you don't have any friends you can make some friends and then tell them about us maybe you could even get a job to make some money <laughs> And meet friends at the same time and 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 square that circle in more than one way. That's patreon.com slash GB podcast. But he was gonna say make some job to make some money to make some friends. <laughs> yes to friends. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you, Bob. I was wondering what your stance was on friends. Anyway, moving on to news. Uh 505 Games is publishing and co-developing a Mercury Steam third person action RPG called Project Iron, which will be set in a dark fantasy world. I think this is a good time to remind everyone they've never made a good game without a Nintendo holding their hand. And we're talking, this isn't like a kind walking with your partner holding your hand. This isn't even, um... No, I grabbed your wrist this, and dragging you. <laughs> this isn't even a, my child might run off if I don't hold their hand tightly. This is, my child has punched five people at this theme park in the mouth. I'm holding it really tight for the love of God. We need to get back to our hotel room. <laughs> that is the level of uh, control <laughs> Nintendo has over Mercury's team. So, uh, oh boy, this game is probably going to be Lords of Shadow. I don't know. They just got off Metroid. Maybe they learned things from being pressed against uh, pressed against their own litter box <laughs> i would i would i would be optimistic if it was another 2d game but it's like a 3d rpg action thing that seems like it's going to have a really ambitious scale so no probably not it, it'll probably look really nice Hopefully. yes it'll look really it's, nice it's, so that'll be good i i honestly didn't think you know and i think lords of shadow one and mirror fate to some extent look really nice uh i didn't think that game space lords look good no it, it kind of looked hideous but I, I, I assume, based on things they've said about this, that this will look nice, being dark fantasy. They know? are getting money. Yeah. And dark yeah, fantasy is definitely like their thing, not, I, not whatever Space Lords was. Yeah, I think Epic also <laughs> has this locked down in some way, because I remember Mercury Steam signing something with Epic also. Yeah, 505 loves Epic. Yeah. They, they're good friends. Good yeah. friends. Yeah, 505 is like, we just want money. Yeah, yeah. Epic, Epic, Epic will laugh at all of Tim Sweeney's jokes until his credit card declines. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, we uh, they announced <laughs> because what everything at Microsoft fuck? needs to have the dumbest name what ever. The Bob, they announced Clarity Boost coming to X Cloud. Is what? this okay? What let is, me guess what this is. Before okay, go we ahead. go into sure, what yeah. it actually is, mm -hmm. I assume this is a post processing sharpening technique they have put over the stream you get to see damn you're getting good at this <laughs> <laughs> what? so yeah the funniest part oh, it's no. exclusive to microsoft <laughs> edge browser that's the only browser you'll be able to use uh clarity boost in i posted an image so you guys can oh, look it over and see oh, no. see if it works out for you it looks a lot better than um it looks a lot better than uh amd's weird fsr thing because, of course, when you encode a video and send it over the internet, that softens it. So if you have some sort of temporal smart filter to try to re-unsoften it, that kind of makes sense. And honestly, these results look kind of nice. It's a fucking shame. It's, look it's localized entirely to Microsoft Edge browser. In their it, kitchen. It, it, appears to, it appears to do anything, which is more than I would have expected. Yes. Yeah. That, that, the biggest shock here is that you had something to show me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, and yeah. it looks pretty good. I, I just, I thought it was funny that it was uh, exclusive to Microsoft Edge. Yeah. Which, which for some reason they say, how to download Microsoft Edge Canary. Does anyone know what I Microsoft assume that's like Edge. a beta version because that's what I would call a beta version. Yeah, like call canary. or maybe bird. that's like the version yeah. for phones. Because this canary maybe. is what you send into the, in the, the mine, mine so, ah. they don't, so yeah. you don't die. They so do. wait, are you yeah. saying Microsoft knows using this browser might kill me? Yes. Yes. Oh, <coughs> that's unfortunate. Uh, but yeah, this looks pretty good, honestly. Um, so if you're the totally pre-existing person who's playing xbox games via xbox game cloud via xbox game pass ultimate and you're doing it through your desktop pc <laughs> you can use your microsoft edge browser which you obviously already use can someone make the flow chart for this like start <laughs> are you playing this are you doing it here 
at least they chose the game where I would ever approach doing that. The Gears Tactics. You don't need to be like super high reflex on. I didn't realize that's what this was. I just saw a Gears looking character, but yeah. Yeah, this is Gears Tactics, man. I mean, the the whole point of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate slash Xbox Cloud is, or X Cloud, is that you're supposed to be able to play like any of the games. Right. The the thought of sharpening this is really cool. I'm glad they did that. I uh, I, I just lost it because it was like, why didn't Google? <laughs> of all the people who should have known to do this. Yeah, no. And- Dan, okay. everything around the city is a nightmare. They're not, they're not figuring that out. Uh, Dan, it, it's been so long. Uh-huh. And, and, and maybe I'm coming off that second shot. I was like, what does Google have to do with cloud? <laughs> I genuinely was like that for about the past 20 seconds. Okay, uh, let me explain. So $15 keep disappearing out of my bank account. Oh, weird. Why? Because <laughs> they, they, they're they robbing me. Uh, <laughs> they're not even providing a service. Oh, uh, okay. You should like log into your account and cancel it. I would love to. <laughs> We're going to move to KZ for news next. KZ, do your second bullet first because it's... Okay, it's the funny. It's the one of the funniest ones of the day. Yeah. Uh, so oh. PlayStation Plus's games for this month came out, and one of them pe- that people noticed is Godfall Challenger Edition. And people are like, oh, okay. You know, it's been a year since Godfall came out. I'd like to maybe jump into that and experience it. Uh, the version of Godfall included in PlayStation Plus is insane because instead you... This version gives you the end game content of Godfall. It puts you up to like the, the the level 50, I think they said it was, and you only get access to the end game content. Not the main game story, not the darkness and fire uh, expansions. You don't get any of that, but you can pay to get access to those, but getting this pack will level you up past it, so unless they're scaling, it makes all that other content automatically pointless. This is psychotic. Yeah, this is, the this most is in- deranged. <laughs> what is wrong with them? I don't know. I just, just be normal. No. Give us half the story of the Earl Matthew Chiefskates. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what the hell they were. Just thinking. have the Why would Sony it? take this? I don't know. <sighs> Maybe they were also confused, and they're like, like clearly, this has got, <laughs> this has got a, you know, this has got a story. I, I'd like to point. I'd like to point out that Godfall is not what you would call a success. No, no. considering uh. It, it has 13 viewers on Twitch right now and is a service game. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem. No, they totally showed up in that top 10 most played PS5 games, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, for people who just bought a PS5 and they hadn't owned a PlayStation before. And they felt like falling in that hole like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they, they got tra- They're like, I love Gearbox. <laughs> I love oh, I, I, God. Fu- I fucking love Randy and his magic tricks. You know, I'm probably that person's probably the only person who could be even more disappointed than me because they didn't get any of that either. Uh, yeah, there's not a single fucking bazinga. The, that that person is Randy Pitchford wearing a paper plate with a string on it as a mask. <laughs> yeah. Much like um the person who's using Microsoft Edge to play <laughs> Xbox Game Pass <laughs> on his fucking desktop is phil spencer with a pepper paper mask <laughs> oh man I, I don't know i don't know how this happens i'm gonna i'm gonna download it i'm gonna i haven't <laughs> have a stroke me too as i, I try have, to I, be I, like oh wow <laughs> i got that uh the expanded memory for my ps5 so yeah i'll download it i'll see how this is <laughs> hey when you get expanded memory that's the moment you start making mistakes and being like i i will never play this but i should download it anyway <laughs> It feels really good when you start clearing that backlog, though. Yeah. Like, I had three or four games already I've deleted since I downloaded everything I own. Yeah, uh, I'm not making that. I'm not doing that. I'm just like, I'm going to d- download anything as it comes up. <laughs> and then we'll see it goes from there. Well, you have a data cap, so that's a really different situation. <laughs> yes, that's true. If I tried to do what you did, uh, I would just go over my data cap immediately. <laughs> yeah. uh, I like the idea. You're like, I have to download some stuff. I'm bringing my PS5 to Dan's house. I actually, <laughs> I had to download Call of Duty twice already, so I'm scared. Wait, why? Because it, it of PS4? Failed. Yeah, no, it failed once on the first install of it. For some reason, it just broke. <laughs> it just wouldn't boot. What? God damn it. That's yeah, I have no weird. idea. <laughs> Man, okay. Uh, let's move on. Uh, so Battlefield 2042 didn't do very well in terms of just coming out. Yeah. And and I saw a feedback post or one of those things where they're like, 
We know that we've gotten a lot of feedback on some legacy features you want for Battlefield 2042. And one of the ones listed was end of match score. Yeah, that game's a nightmare, apparently. I did not know it was that not done. Yeah. That I can't. Yeah, no, if it, if it was any <laughs> tier below that, I probably would have picked it up so we could check it out. But it just sounds like this shit shouldn't have shipped. What? EGM gave it 100. What? Oh, what? Fuck them, whatever. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is insane. The amount of things that were apparently just missing from that. That one seems like the most. How? How does that not? Yeah, I don't get it. Like, What they, happens when you hit tab? They, they come up with this, this game that had a proper hype cycle i feel like like they, they the, the trailers made me think of battlefield yeah we were getting hype at e3 watching watching a pretty cool trailer there was like a, a storm yeah so it, I, I don't get how they ended it where they did yeah well it seems like it's in that same situation uh that need for speed was when they just brought out a, an, an extra really bad one that no one bought so they're scrambling to fix it um dice gm oscar gabrielson uh is leaving the company Vin Zampella of Respawns being uh, installed as the new boss of Battlefield. Uh, I started digging into this a little bit more. Uh, they're, they're making like a Battlefield universe where they're like, everything's like connected in some way. So there'll be like side projects that are like, uh, that are like narrative, that are like narratively um, like connected in some way, I guess. Uh, yeah, what? that's worrying. It sounds what? like several different, pro different games in the Battlefield the narrative universe. narrative of Battlefield? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what everyone wants. Uh, huh? but, but the next battlefield that they're waking is uh, in development by Ripple Effect Studios. Um, they made the Portal mode in Battlefield 2042. Ripple Effect is the former Dice LA studio that Vince Sampella took over in January 2020. So I can kind of see why he's getting installed as the battlefield boss because it seems like they're just good. <laughs> they're slowly morphing this Dice LA studio into the battlefield core studio the the funniest thing that could come of this is if dice is not using frostbite that would be that would be so funny where they're like here's the next here's the next battlefield bob uh it's got weird titanfall like dashing and shit and it's on unreal fun real five that they they need to just also that would be really funny if like this if the next battlefield ships and is on unreal five but bioware is still in the please please <laughs> Please, no, may let us stop using Frostbite. And some executives like, no. The creative director on Dragon Age 4 is like, can we just use Unreal? And they're like, no. And then he's like, okay, I'll leave then. Apparently it was decided they were using Frostbite a long time ago because BEA was like, well, you get 20% less budget if you want to use Unreal because we have to pay them. <sighs> yeah. When, like, yeah, making, ma making a good game doesn't make you sell more copies. Yeah, yeah, when I was first looking at this, um, I thought it was like, okay, so that would mean uh, Vincent Pell is like s slightly involved with like respawn stuff at their at their core studio. The ripple effect one that he re took over like at the start of last year and this and it's like, no, he's just like the boss of the IP and his and it's like the, the next big main thing is that the studio he just got like. So it's, he's still doing the, the double store manager thing of two studios, but he's not taking on a third role. Yeah, so yeah, that's I, good. yeah I thought it was going to be a third role until I dug into it. And it's like, oh, no, it's that studio that he said was going to be working on some ambitious shooter stuff is, in fact, seemingly just going to be the future of Battlefield. Hopefully they can turn this series around. May, they Having someone like that who knows <laughs> shooters, shooters at all should help because it feels like Battlefield, the company, the dice lost everyone. That knew what they were doing a long time ago. Yeah. Also, they they've been bleeding yeah. staff completely dry after that pitch for B Star Wars Battlefront Three fell through, where they're like, "We're not making it because we'd have to make twenty percent more just to be able to make as much money." Uh, apparently, a shit ton of the people that worked on both Battlefronts are just gone. Dice has like no one with experience. And nothing on was that. lost. Yep. God, those games are so bad, what? even by comparison to Battlefield's so current state. <laughs> So what is like the the gimmick of Battlefield is it is you have a bunch of players at once you have vehicles and the and the players have classes. Yes. And there's zones usually like really big zones. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like the the primary mode of play in Battlefield is conquest because the idea is teamwork's important, occupying a space is important, vehicles are important and you get to 
use all of this stuff, all of these tools to help you creatively get between these areas, right? Right. Uh, yeah, that's it, the idea. It's funny because I'm just thinking of how, yeah, they got most of that stuff working for Apex, which is, is that still running on the Valve engine? Yeah, that's that's okay. still on Source. <laughs> yeah, I was like, is that still Source? Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. If they if we literally just got Battlefield that controls as well as Apex, that'd be glorious. It, it is it is insane how much uh Zampella and Respawn are carrying EA in terms of high quality products now, where it's like we we just accidentally gave you a great battle royale. We we made a Star Wars game people liked after you made a bunch of the P no basically <laughs> no one fucking liked it all. Yeah, no, this is they're the only studio pulling their way to EA. That that did so well to the degree where you're like, I'm not we're not making any more multiplayer Star Wars games. We're we've got two in development that are single player. Man, if I was a Western publisher in the games industry, I would have to be a fucking jackass for driving out someone so powerful who could be such an asset <laughs> to keeping an important, powerful franchise running well with new innovative titles coming regularly. Huh, who would do that? Who would just do that, Dan? Who in the right <laughs> fucking mind would kick Zampella out? <laughs> That that oh man, I kind of forgot about <laughs> all of that and how fucking funny that shit was. Where apparently fucking Patrick Klepping wanted a scoop so bad, they're like, "We're just hanging out in their parking lot." <laughs> he was talking about that on the giant Bobcast. He's like, "We're you get we're getting there now." <laughs> they won't open their doors. <laughs> but yeah, that's crazy. Uh, I'm I'm also. Looking forward to seeing uh, how their attempt to revitalize Need for Speed goes with them bringing back the, the dev that apparently is competent at it. Where they're like, Criterion's back on it. We're sorry. I have no idea what to expect from that, though. Just because Criterion hasn't made anything in so long. Yeah. Like, did they lose all the staff? Who knows? Uh, what's funny is that they were working on the new one that's going to bring it back. And then they were all pushed in to work on Battlefield 2042 to fix it. Oh, <sighs> yeah. They keep having to do fucking vehicle support for these goddamn Battlefield games. That's so sad. It sucks. Yeah. I'm a Battlefield fan. And that sucks. Or it's like, all hands on deck, we have to fix the bad thing. That has no prayer. Yeah. It There's... never stood a chance, evidently. Which sucks. They did a really good job of dressing it up until after E3 when it's like, months are going by. There's no beta. It's coming out in a month. Is it coming out in a month? We don't know what's happening with this game at all. See, see, I, I never had any hope because I feel like every battlefield in all of 8th Gen was like this. Where I've... it just launches completely fucked. Four launched in a rough state, but that's because they had to integrate very different network ship for the consoles. Um, I feel like three and four are very similar, and they fixed the state of four real fast. I enjoyed when was playing. Battle, when was Battlefield Hardline? Oh, that was mid gen. Yeah, so that was the, between four and we're five. We're talking twenty sixteen okay, to twenty eighteen. I forgot that yeah, wasn't. I yeah, forgot was, that um, wasn't seventh gen because that has such seventh gen energy. Oh, work. It it's does. Battlefield, but you play as a hardened cop. Yeah, because eighth, eighth gen was um Battlefield four, then Hardline, then one, then five. Yeah. 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 You got it. I remember because each time I thought about trying it, but that 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 beta for Battlefield One really fucking <laughs> knocked my teeth out. Yeah, fucking four was the last time I was happy. So and then Battlefield Five showed the same trailer like four but, times but during E three, and I'm starting to fucking die. Yeah, five but, was still World War Two. It's like stop guys, it. Stop. That, like, that and, lady's and, got and a it, metal hand or whatever. And though. this time it seems like they figured it out, and yeah, then they didn't. <laughs> right, that was the hope of like they they get it. They go back to the present day. This is they the have lots of cool tools and lots of crazy destruction. And it's still just it's terrible. And, apparently. Call, and Call of Duty's chosen to be boring this year. This is it. This yes. is that moment. Because that's what you were talking about constantly, yeah. like in the in the first half of the year is like this is this is like a shot for them. And yeah. And and, and then the closer we got to launch, the more I was like, oh nope. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it really was just slipping. <sighs> okay. Let's keep trucking. All right. Bob, you got news? Sure. Um this is something that feels like it didn't hit anywhere else. Grand Blue Versus got a new character announced. It was basically only announced in Japan. It had some Grand Blue event, not a, in any, any other capacity. Oh, uh, yeah, they they did that for a few of those characters. Um, 
So her name's Vera. I guess it's the start of a new season pass because they they filled out the last one. The f- last character pass is done. Uh, she looks pretty cool. She's got like this red sword. She can stand on air. Oh, that's cool. So, yeah, she's a she's a she's a girl boss. Mm. Yeah, she does, and, the, and that she does war crimes. <laughs> yeah, and she does the uh, the crazy girl laugh, which I'm sure a lot of people like. Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> yes. So that's cool. I'm I'm excited to see how this goes, and hopefully they pull through and add the the right kind of netcode to this. Get some GTPO in there. Yes, that would be very very nice. I would consider booting that game again. I feel like Spy Game said something. At least they acknowledged the fact that they need good netcode. Yeah, they have said that. So hopefully they they get that in here. Yeah, uh, hopefully we get a PS5 version because this game still loads forever on the PS5. Yeah, they might they might even announce that with like in the next two weeks because uh, Grand Blue Fest. Okay, good. Yeah, is, I was wondering when that all- was because this was like a tournament just for Grand Blue. So uh, knowing that the festival hasn't happened yet's good. God, that would be yeah. Now that, that's later. We'll probably also get a uh, a release date for Relink since they said it was 2022. I'm excited. That that still looks oh, yeah. cool. Yeah, that that looks super super sick. And uh, I hope they do a PS5 version for uh, Versus because I like the gameplay of that one a lot, and I think some of those characters are really sick. Um, and the only other news I got thirteen thirteen Sentinels uh, got out for a Switch. It comes out April 12th, so it's it's, get, it's getting close. So if you have a Switch and don't have anything else, jump on there. I guess, yeah, it's only on PlayStation now. Yeah. So this does open yeah, it's up only a lot. On PlayStation. It's not even like PC. So. I yep. think this is the first time a Vanillaware game has come to a non-PlayStation console in a decade. I was like, what, the last time? The 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 Muramasa on the Wii? Yeah. God. Please, uh, please pick this up when it comes out if you're at all interested in good good ass video games i mean this thing is fucking I'm, I'm game of the year 2020 so for well. us, isn't yeah, it? yeah i know i was like please, please <laughs> yes it is please invest in the big think dimensions number one game of the year yeah this game's really something special it's really incredible and you, it's not one of those you really have to worry about running bad on the switch it's like that's not the point <laughs> it's gonna look yeah. nice yeah that's plenty good in fact, I feel like it adds to the mood when it runs back because you're like, oh, I'm getting overtaken in this in this in this battle. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Maybe it, running a little bit slower during the insane strategy moments will give you more time to think. Maybe I've had some people say that on the PS4 vanilla where they're like, <laughs> this helped. So, uh, yeah, no, look forward to that. Uh, feel you've got news. Uh, so good old games released a thing saying they lost a bunch of money this year. And would have to refocus their business to which I say it, they almost literally blame, which I agree with, is that they started trying to get modern games and going against their own fucking philosophy, which is like, we don't have DRM, but we want to have Hitman three. And I'm like, no, you, you don't you don't get to do that. You set up your you set up your fucking philosophy, right? You shouldn't you shouldn't be surprised when people get mad at you for spending a decade going, give us money because this is our philosophy and then going. Well, maybe we want to directly compete with Steam. I'm like, why? Look at look at Tim Sweeney over there on fire. Do you want to do that? Yeah. And they're, like, they're like, maybe. Hey, do you want to become Korean? Is that what he said he was doing? <laughs> yeah, I think he said Ikbe Nine Korean. <laughs> Being so, chilly. Uh, I just wanted I I just wanted to address that because because fu- I I was really unhappy with good old games this year for doing that, and I was even more unhappy with every. With every fucking person, and there was a bunch of them being like, "This is harassment. They're bullying that company." And I'm like, "Fuck you!" <laughs> and they're trying to hold them to what they said they were about. Yeah, that's toxic, Bob. Don't hold God. anyone to a standard, especially don't, their own. <laughs> don't hold somebody to a standard that they willingly took on and, and used as a marketing point for 15 years. Yeah, no, that's toxic to re- remember why a thing is the way. It, uh, it, uh, look, if you're not okay with the downhill slide of the standard of living and quality of things, then that's toxic. <laughs> it, it, please enjoy that preview of MSNBC for over the next decade. <laughs> what else do you have? Uh, Enigma Archives Rain Code was announced. That is Kodaka, the creator of Danganronpa's new game. It has the same composer. It has the same artist. He's the director. It's it, It's like his version of AI, the Somnium files where it's like, I'm making something that is not in the series that I made, but it is very much the same aesthetic and tone and everything like that. 
it looks it looks neat. I'm excited to play it because I quite enjoyed those games, and there's there's no part of them that that blew up in my face. <laughs> <laughs> it, you didn't light a cigar and it didn't hurt you. Yeah, uh, you can no longer buy Titanfall. This actually pissed me off, but whatever. It's Titanfall one. Uh, they just took it down. Uh, I I I. I think they took it down for something to do with hackers? Yeah, the, the yeah. game's been in a fucking mess state for years. Yeah, it's especially... Yeah, th this was basically yeah. them saying, like, well, yeah, we're not going to fix it, but we, so we won't let anybody buy it anymore, but we'll leave the servers up, but you can't really play on them because it's all exploiters, and we're not going to do anything about that. Goodbye. Yeah, <sighs> That's this, sad. this has been happening especially throughout the year of hackers being like this. People like, why do you let us... Why are you letting people buy this game when when the hackers are this bad and then that controversy of hackers trying to do a ransom in an attempt to take over the titanfall mobile game <laughs> there, there's a lot of really stupid stuff happening with respawn in uh titanfall one <laughs> this past year yeah <sighs> and in something i'm glad this next news got like announced because i was i thought i would had been going insane <laughs> yeah when i saw this because announced, i was like thank god <laughs> I knew that they had mentioned that there would be a new expansion for Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning. I didn't know that it wasn't out yet. I thought it... The reason that I went insane is like, no, neither of these are new. Did I make up that they were making a new one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to be honest. I silently had that moment during a big thick in the past. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it is called Fate Sworn, which is... Uh, what you're called, uh, I'd like to point out that uh, that a, a few months before this game came out, Skyrim came out, and it's about the Dragonborn, and I wonder if those uh, two terms have anything to do with one another. Um, they, there's going to be a non-combat skill tree, which confuses me, because there's nothing other than combat in this game. Well, this is their new take. <laughs> I fucking guess. Uh... <laughs> They said they're going to add a new class of weapons and armor. A new weapon at least means a new we weapon set, a new move list, because they all have different moves. And they said that you will go underground into procedurally generated chaos dungeons. <laughs> what the fuck is a chaos dungeon? Well, that's a new thing for this. That, that, that That's just the name for their procedurally generated dungeon. The darkness is so thick I can taste it. The chaos yeah. dungeon has a real danger beast energy. <laughs> Um, and apparently, since, since there was no snowy biome in the game, they're like, this, 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 this expansion will be snowy. I might buy it and try it, because I'm just curious to see if, like, if I step into the DLC zone, does my, like, control suddenly get way better? How much are they charging for this? Did they announce? Uh, yes, it is $20 if you own the original game. Or got it on, or got it on PlayStation Plus. I'm just gonna read some of the key features. Face the god of chaos in an over six hour long main quest with a compelling storyline that concludes the game? What? What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. I, I, guess, I, I guess they're like, well, the, the main story didn't really fucking conclude anything, so I guess we have to do this. <laughs> chaos is a completely new gameplay mechanic connected to weapons, enemies, rifts, and portals. <laughs> chaos. Okay. I guess from what you told us about the end of the game, I kind of get it because causing fate to just stop and end, I guess that would give rise to chaos. Huh? Yeah, I guess. Chaos. Uh, the j journey takes you to two entirely new dungeon sets, which I guess I mean tile sets because everything is kind of structured exactly the same. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> new enemies and new, new enemies. There's a bunch of new stuff. New music by award-winning composer Grant Kirko. Hell yeah. yeah! 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 I hope we have to grab by the goalie names in there. Oh my god. <laughs> and, and, and a bunch of more generic things. I, I can't not be curious. Of course, you, you went the through the whole thing. You have to. Yeah, I, I have to, especially since this, uh, we're a decade out from the yes. original. Yeah, now that it's it escaped Rhode Island. I mean, Rhode Island still owns the game. I'm sure they're going to own this. Yeah, yeah, I know. But we're we're in that phase where it's like it's not even coming out anywhere. The fact that it I just, they got remastered and an expansion came out. Or is coming I just, out. I, just ima I just imagine every so often the governor of Rhode Island just walks into THQ Nordic's offices and is like, how you doing? How's it going? <laughs> now the uh, most sought and, after uh, political role in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, and Dungeon Fighters, Dungeon Fighter Duel revealed three new characters since the last time we uh, recorded. Grappler, Berserker, and Inquisitor. They look really neat. I think aiding makes good games, and these look fun. And I'm excited to play this game, especially since it'll probably have rollback netcode and maybe won't have to connect 14 times to the server at the title screen. Right. Aiding should make the trailers, too. <sighs> no, they have yeah, to be 45 seconds. Should. I'm sorry. Um, I think well, it's why, really why, funny. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I like, is this game coming out in like March? Because they're really like dumping yeah. characters on yeah, us. Yeah, it feels maybe. like it's coming out within the next six months and we're getting a new character every five days. <laughs> I think it's really funny that they end each trailer with who's next. And it's like, I don't care. These are Dungeon <laughs> Fighter characters that don't even have names. These are classes. We are in the same boat. I'm like, who next? I don't know. Unless you give me Scorpion for Mortal Kombat, this won't be exciting. Yeah, but Dungeon Fighter is one of those franchises that has literally 700 million people playing it. So I'm sure there's somebody that's excited for these. I, I wish they had names. I mean, here's the thing. I'm looking at fucking Grappler and I'm like, how is this the most excited I've been for a fighting game character in forever? And it's just a dude named Grappler. Like, his yeah. moveset looks fun. Yeah, no, I, I, I wish that this was like you. Fate, uh, where it's like, yeah, they have these titles, but then they're also a character. <laughs> right. Maybe, maybe this will have a story mode that makes him a character. Maybe. Hello, I'm Inquisitor. Man, I, I hadn't actually looked really hard at these trailers beyond like a glance, but wow, you can really see the Marvel 3 in a lot of these effects. <laughs> Like the way the gra the way the grappler like slams to the ground and has like the dash where he and like the green flame when he throws people down. It's all very Marvel three. Me, I'm just watching the gameplay and I'm like, this looks like cool shit. Yeah, yeah. I I, I like more cool shit. I'm glad more people get to use Arxis as tech. Yes. Yeah. I think that. Oh my god. If if they take this tech and then work for Capcom. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that would be ludicrous. If if Capcom could just use this to make something, some sort of fighting game they own with a cool art style. Yeah, if there that was some was kind a Star of Star Wars if there game, was some, at some point. <laughs> <laughs> if or or if there was some kind of franchise they had about characters who all attended different educational organizations <laughs> and they had to fight. I think that'd be a really great match for this Arxis graphic tech. Yeah, <laughs> they'd be rivals in some way. Power Stone. <laughs> yes, finally. <laughs> that's that's all my news. That's all the news. Else. That's it. Okay. We're done. Oh, Woo! Okay. <laughs> news, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Bob. I'm glad we got your stance on news. There's no more, yeah. Uh, Bob and I will be doing things over the next week, like maybe getting videos out. Yeah, maybe clearing through that backlog that's getting worse and worse as time goes by. Eh, that's on a personal level. I doubt we're doing videos of that shit. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell people what we got coming out. Uh, we should have a behind the scenes thing explaining why the fuck the Xbox video took 11 months. <laughs> uh, coming out sometime. I don't know if it'll be the next week. Probably. Not. What are you just going to show a weather forecast or <laughs> weather for today and forever? <laughs> it's just a hurricane. When I flew in and I'm like, I'm above the clouds. As soon as I go in, everything turns gray and evil. And I was like, should I go back? And, the, and then the next four months happened, and you're like, wow, it's just holding it the whole time. Impressive. Never seen the weather have a four-month-long erection. Yeah, Dan, you were like, you brought it with you. <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah, no, I'm clearly unholy. Um, yeah. But yeah, aside from that, probably giving games a chance. Hey, hey, KZ, what you got going on? Uh... I'll be I'll be burning through Endwalker on stream since that uh, early access on that starts in like seven hours and uh, Halo Infinite. I'm going to try and get some some of that get through some of that campaign before big thing because it launches on like a Wednesday. God, yeah, that's next week, isn't it? Yep. Oh, yeah, that is next week. Yeah. So we'll be streaming that. I hope that it launches at midnight at least so we can get a real like head to start like a chunk of time that we can stream it before uh, the game awards. Yeah. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Next week's going to suck so much. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> was bad enough when it was just fucking infinite right before podcast day. And then yep. it became the Game Awards as well. And it's time for another big think live. <laughs> Feel you got going, anything going on in the next week? I'm going to become the Endwalker. Nice. <laughs>
Thank you for listening to this episode of Big Think Dimension. If you would like to support us, head on over to www.patreon.com slash gbpodcast where you can get extra podcasts and early access to our anime podcast, Chugging Bleach and Mondo Cool. Head on over there and become a $5 backer or a podlord today. The executive producers for this month of Gigaboots are Esme, E. Lee Broyles, Star Falcon, Spaceman Spiff, Red Blaze 27, Brendan O'Sullivan, Live Action Muito Real, Completely Normal Adam, Cooper Tank, Zilter, and Virvarn. Thank you very much to our executive producers and also these pictures. If you want to become an executive producer for an obscure but powerful YouTube channel, head on over to patreon.com slash gigaboots today.